Hey folks, welcome once again to the Morris Adventures 2024, day 7 on May the 15th. Um, <laughs> an interesting day, okay? Uh, this morning was beautiful, alright? Uh, can't complain about that at all. And then around 1 o'clock, uh, the... Well, we left around one, didn't we, Mom? Uh, so we went, went on for a little ride. All right. Uh, had some lunch. And then we went to uh, another place that we had been told about. We wanted to check it out. And while we were there, oh, <laughs> the clouds opened up. <laughs> Let me tell you. And from about that time, which was right around 2 o'clock, maybe 2.15, until around six tonight, uh, it come down hard, really high. I mean, it came down steady. Sometimes harder than other times. All right, but yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, made it back here. You know, of course the RV was dry. Not outside. You know, of course. You know, and uh, I don't know how she did it, but she avoided all the mud puddles. And I found them all, okay? Because my shoes and my socks were soaked. And it wasn't because I was walking in mud puddles. It was because, well, yeah, I was walking in mud puddles because they were <laughs> hidden in the grass. But anyway, hey, it's all good. All good. Um, other than that, uh, hey, our, our, our last two RVs came in today. No problems. You know, everybody arrived safely. And today was just a day of uh, renewing friendships and uh, enjoying uh, each other's company and visiting and whatnot. We all had, uh, you know, dinner on our own, uh, supper on our own. And, you know, then we got back together and, and had a campfire tonight. Uh, this place that we're, yeah, the, you know, here at Palmetto Cove, they've got a large pavilion and there's a very large fireplace in it with, uh, you know, wood that's you know for us to use all right uh, at no extra charge so it's a nice place so that's what we did this afternoon and this evening it just uh, visited with each other after the rain stopped and uh you know had the campfire tomorrow uh starts our fun uh we've got a a, a tour tomorrow morning i think at 10 o'clock uh, with uh, a local tea factory or tea store where the actual you know they, they grow the tea leaves and you know, process them, and, and we're looking forward to it there. You know, it's, it's going to be, a, well, hopefully it's going to be a nice tour, all right? But, uh, having said all that, uh, I've never seen something like this before, so it's going to be interesting for all of us, to say the least. And then, uh, of course, tomorrow night we'll have our our opening uh, grill, you know, grill out. Uh, not a contest, just everybody, you know, we set up some grills, and everybody just cooks their own food and brings a side to share, and... Just visit and enjoy each other's company. Which is what this group's really all about. Oh, excuse me. Oh. You know, we get together a couple times a year. Uh, no set agenda, really. I mean, we know that on the first night we're going to do the grill out. The second night, uh, we usually go out to eat somewhere. And then the third night, we have a potluck. Uh, and then, you know, Sunday morning, uh, we have a, dev uh, a devotion and some folks stick around for the rest of the day. Other folks hit the road to get back. Uh, right now we're supposed to stay and leave on Monday, but you know, uh, we have a meeting Monday night. So it depends on what time we can get out of here Monday morning, or we may leave Sunday afternoon and, you know, a dry dock somewhere on the road, uh, Sunday night. I don't know, but Boondock, not dry dock. Boondock. Anyway, we'll see. Or I might just go ahead and get up early Monday and drive the whole thing like we did coming over last Monday. Having said all of that, it don't really matter. It's all good. Okay? Uh, I say it's all good because everybody's here safe and sound. No problems. You know, uh, tomorrow is supposed to be a beautiful day with no rain. Uh, you know, Friday may be a little bit different. Uh... But we're going to be eating out, so, you know, that's okay, too. There are a couple of places oh, that I can recommend that have been recommended to us. One of them is the um, Peaceful Place, 
It's actually the YMCA camp up here. The chapel was built in the early 1900s. It was remodeled in 2015 or 2001 and then again in 2022. All right. And the picture I saw was from the back of the chapel looking you know, towards the, the platform and the pulpit and all that. There's a cross suspended from the ceiling and it looks out over the valley into the mountain range behind it. And it's, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, some of our friends went there today and they said from there you could see back across the valley and see the campground, you know, and you could see the RVs. You couldn't really tell which one was which, but you could see the RVs here in the campground. So uh, we'll see that either tomorrow or maybe Friday. That's one of the places, and then there's also there's a, um, Caesar's Head that we want to go see. So there's some things to do here now that the group is here, uh, and we're going to be busy. We're going to be enjoying each other's company and, and hopefully uh, seeing some good sights. Uh, and uh, by the way, I did find my coconut ice cream today, so we're, we're good. All right, we're really good. All right, and speaking of good, folks, uh, uh, let's get on some in, in, into some good word now, okay? Because today's scripture, uh, a lot of you have heard it before. Last year, it was um, one of the well, it was the the verse that the, that our pastor had chosen for be our theme, our mantra for last year. You know, and 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 you know, I am the vine, you are my branches, and and that kind of concept all right and today's uh, uh scripture talks about that and it is john 15 2 and it's not really a hard scripture to understand i mean you can make it harder than what it really is but you know well, let's just read it okay john 15 2 all right Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. All right, so let's look at that. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more. And folks, what we're talking about right here is that in, in, in verse 1 of chapter 15, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Okay? Now, this is Christ talking, all right? So, let's look at this. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit in itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Now that's verses 1 through 4. All right. So every branch, verse 2 now, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Now, what are we talking about? All right. We're talking about us. All right. And he's saying that every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. All right. And let's take that into what it, 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 the, just the bare word, okay? Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Those evil thoughts, those unclean words, those unclean thoughts, those Actions that are not Christ-like. Okay? Those do not bear fruit. Okay? So what he's saying is that God takes those away. God will remove that branch. If you will seek the Holy Spirit's guidance and God's will, He will help you overcome those actions and words and deeds that are not glorifying to God. Okay? That are unchrist-like. Because remember, folks, all that Christian means is that you are Christ-like. That doesn't mean you're perfect. Only Christ was. Okay, so don't get confused in that. Because you're a Christian, you think you're perfect. No, 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 no. 
Ain't no way. Ain't no way. All right. But it means you're Christ. It means you're trying to achieve and live as Christ had given us the example, the way he lived. Now, having said that, God knows that we're human. We're infallible. Or we're fallible, not infallible. And that we will make mistakes. And that's why it's said here that he will remove those branches. Those things that do not bear fruit, he will remove those. Those desires for those things. The desires for for that other bottle. The desires for the other cigarette. The desire for that other drug. You know, the desire for the pornography or whatever else. All right. He will remove those desires. He will remove that branch that does not bear fruit. Okay. And every branch that bears the fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Okay. And folks, what Christ was talking about here is the human us. But he was using this parable as as a vine as a branch. So let's quick just, just go ahead and follow through that. You know, even in 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 verse five, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Okay, You're talking about a vine. Okay, a vineyard, a grape, a vineyard. A vine dresser, I guess is the terminology, cuts back all the new growth from that year in the winter. Because a vine, a grapevine, will not produce fruit on old growth. So, all of that new growth that produced all the grapes is cut back. It's pruned back. So it will produce more because then it's going to grow more new vines and produce more fruit. Because if the vineyard, the vineyard dresser did not trim it back, fruit would not be grown on the old growth. All right. So that's what he's talking about here. You know, that branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more. Even if we are Christ-like, we still have room for improvement. Because as I just said moments ago, Christ was perfect. We are not. We are going to continue to make mistakes. And this pruning that he's talking about is some of those sections, parts of our life, of our mentality of our I used to say stinking thinking okay God's going to come in the Holy Spirit's going to come in God through the Holy Spirit's going to come in he's going to kind of prune that stuff away because even though you're living a, a good Christian life and you're trying to do things right we still have room for improvement and the way we are going to get that improvement is by the pruning that God through the Holy Spirit is going to do in our life you know there's some things that that when I first got saved, I thought that that was okay, you know, and, and I continued on doing those things. But as I matured in my walk, my personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit, I realized there are certain things that I was doing, certain ideas that I was holding on to, certain uh, um, beliefs, if you will, that weren't really fruitful so God removed those branches but also because I was producing fruit I had to be trimmed back a little bit you know and there's a, a song that we sing uh, I won't say a lot but but often in 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 our church and it's that you know um, and it talks about being hung up on doctrine and hung up on religion there's a lot of thoughts that I had and beliefs that I had growing up in the denomination that I was raised in that I now question not as being totally wrong, okay, so don't get me don't 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 go there, but not totally correct either. Um like I say there's always room for improvement, okay? 
and you know I, I every individual is supposed to work out their own salvation through Jesus Christ so don't sit in the pew or sit in your chair at home and condemn this person and ridicule that person for the way they believe or the way they worship. Because that doesn't mean that you are actually right. Okay? Um, there are people that do things because of the way they were raised that see nothing wrong with it. And I have seen the Holy Spirit work with them and through them just as I have with other ones that were raised in my church. So it started getting me to question some of the doctrine and some of the principles that my church was teaching. And even my church, my denomination, has made changes since, you know, its conception, uh, you know, over 80 years ago. All right. Or almost 80 years, I think. Well, close to 80 years now. Uh, or maybe longer. But... When we witness, like I told you yesterday, you know, about hearing and believing and, and, and teaching and preaching, you know, when we tell people about what our our friend Jesus did for us, okay, and, 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 and they come in to believing in Jesus Christ and, and, and give their life, okay, that's what it's talking about here. The branches that bear fruit, but those branches still got to be trimmed back and pruned so they can bear fruit some more. So that, that example that I gave you about myself and hanging on to different beliefs and doctrines, you know, that's kind of the, the, the pruning that, that the Holy Spirit, that God does through the Holy Spirit in one's life. And I just give you an example of mine. Now, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about what is or isn't going to happen for you. I'm just telling you about what my friend Jesus did for me and how God, through the Holy Spirit, is changing things in my life and the way I'm thinking. Okay. And that's what this verse is all about. All right. That's what this verse is about. And every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more. You know, um, sometimes we have to have trials. And sometimes we have to go through some tribulation. And, and experience some uncomfortable things. Because down the road, we may meet, we may encounter someone who's experiencing just what we came through. And we can witness and lead them and help them, okay, and minister to them. And this is part of that pruning that he's talking about here, that the, the branches that bear fruit, he's going to prune so they can bear more. It's painful. You get cut. Think about that. Okay, you know, God comes in with the Holy Spirit and starts tripping this away and tripping that away and cutting that away and cutting that away. Okay, you know, <laughs> you're getting the finger cut, you're getting this cut. It's painful, and in the in the metaphoric sound, you know, way, getting pruned in your own spiritual life. Sometimes it's painful, but we're going to bear fruit down the road. Okay, and that's what the scripture is about. Okay. Is that we have to be willing, mm -hmm, all right, to let God through the Holy Spirit prune some things in our life and remove some branches that aren't producing, some things that we hold fast to that is not even Scripture. Okay? Get rid of that. Let the Holy Spirit cut that out because it's not doing you any good. And in that area where you are witnessing and you are working on, let God do the pruning so you can be more of a witness. You know? You can be more of a witness. You know? The apostle, the teacher, the evangelist, the preacher. And what's the fourth one, Mama? The, the fifth one is the teacher. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, preacher, teacher. Okay? 
in those different areas of your life, let the Holy Spirit, let God use the Holy Spirit to do some pruning in that apostle, that prophet, that evangelist, that preacher, and that teacher part of you. All right? So you can be better in each one of those areas. And we're all, I'm not saying that we all have these, and some of us do at different times in our life, in our different spiritual walk. We all have some of those different areas. Okay, but some are called specifically to be apostles. Some are specifically called to be a prophet. Some are evangelists. Some are called to be a pastor. And some are called to be teachers. And those and those five different areas of their life, the Holy Spirit will do some pruning. But all of us have those five different areas that are available to us that we may do different things at different times in those things. I've never been an apostle. Okay, I've never been a prophet. I've never been a pastor. Some people say that I'm an evangelist because of these videos that I reach out and touch people. You know, and I've been a teacher. I've taught young adults in, in, in Sunday school and Bible study. And I used to be a high school teacher. Okay, so there's different areas at different times in our life that God's going to use us. All right. And we have to be willing that every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that we may bear more. Okay? All right, folks. That's all I got for you tonight. Okay? And I, it's already been 21 minutes. So I didn't realize it until just now. Um, hey. If you were like me, and, and, and you didn't really understand this, it's because, one, I didn't have a personal relationship at one time in my life with Jesus Christ. So this didn't really mean anything to me. You're going to cut branches out of me? What, you're going to take this away from me? You're going to take that away from me? God's a bunch of no's, no's, and don'ts. Do this and blah, blah, blah. God's saying, come to me, son. Because my, my yoke is light. Your burden is heavy. Give me your burden. My yoke is light. Right. So, in order to have this, folks, just repeat after me. To, to develop that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is, Heavenly Father, forgive me for I am a sinner. Thank you for sending your Son to experience what I'm experiencing and yet be willing to give his life and shed his blood on the cross for my sins. Yet arise on the third day that I may have like him, eternal life through his blood. Father, forgive me. And send the Holy Spirit to help me and guide me. To strengthen me. And that as I read your word, let the Holy Spirit reveal to me what you would have for me to know. Make this, removing the branches, something that I'm willing to do. And the pruning of my fruitful branches. Let me, Lord, be a fruitful vessel for you. I thank you, Lord, for your son. Forgive me for my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And folks, if you said a prayer like that, or you repeated those exact words, I ask you to do me four things. One, you call a Christian friend. Okay, and let him know that you just gave your heart to Christ. All right, and help and ask that friend to help you when you're Christian. Well, two, you get yourself a Bible and you read it. Okay, it doesn't matter what version the Bible is, whether American Standard, King James, New King James, the message, uh, you know, New English Standard, whatever it is. Okay, get your Bible and read it. And ask the Holy Spirit, pray, and ask the Holy Spirit to, to reveal to you. Okay, which leads to my third thing, and that's daily prayer. Pray every day, a couple times a day, multiple times a day, if you have the opportunity. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a big fancy prayer or anything of that nature because all prayer is is a communication it's a conversation between you and your heavenly father through the blood of jesus you can go straight to the throne and say hey dad i got issues help me and he'll send the holy spirit to help you and four you find yourself a bible believing teaching church and attend it assemble yourself the scripture says assemble yourself together with fellow believers that you may lift each other up Okay, 
folks, it's already been 25 minutes. I didn't mean for it to be that long. You have a blessed night. And Lord willing, we'll come to you again tomorrow night. Okay? Good night. Be blessed.